Good evening. It's 6 o'clock. I'd like to welcome everybody to the March 20th, 2024 regular Finley City Council meeting. We will start this evening's meeting with roll call followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Mr. Ballman? Here. Mr. DeArmond? Here. Ms. Frischi? Here. Mr. Greeno? Here. Mr. Hellman? Here. Mr. Niemeyer? Here. Mr. Palmer? Mr. Russell? Here. Mr. W or Ms. Warnicke? Here. And Mr. Wobser? Present. Mr. Palmer contacted me uh, early this afternoon and let me know that he wasn't feeling well. I will motion to uh, uh, Mr. Bauman. So moved. Second, Mr. Greeno. All those in favor of excusing Mr. Palmer, say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. He is excused. We please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and we will follow that by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to approve the previous public hearing minutes and city council minutes. Mr. Wilbser? So moved. Second, Mr. Niemeyer. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of accepting say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed nay? They are accepted. Um, Mr. Russell, do we have any add-ons, replacements, or removals from tonight's agenda? Yes, sir. We have uh, five add-ons. We have a letter from uh, City Engineer Kalb concerning the sale of benching properties and uh, corresponding legislation, uh, Ordinance Number 2024-038. We have a letter from Hancock Regional Planning Commission Director Matt Cordonier, Cordonier concerning uh, the uh, more the uh, skills of gaming. Uh, moratorium and uh, corresponding or, uh, ordinance 2024-039 and we have uh, the open meetings act printout discussed during the 313 2024 ad hoc committee I'd move that the two letters the uh, open meetings act and the two ordinances be added to the uh, agenda Ms. Ms. Mayor I'll just add a point of clarification that on item one it should be swale benching properties and not sale of benching properties <laughs> motion you. as as discussed do I hear a second second Mr. Hellman discussion hearing none all of those in favor of adding the agenda items as described say aye aye any opposed nay they are added we have no proclamations we have no recognition of retirements we have no petitions we have uh, four requests to speak on the same subject per council rules uh, there are three allowed uh, they are uh, the three allowed are as turned in we had a fourth one from uh, Patty Klein that came in after that I will entertain a motion to add her if Mr. Russell uh, move that all we uh, hear from all four speakers second Mr. Bauman all those in favor of adding um, Mrs. or Ms. Klein say aye aye, aye. Any opposed nay okay and then we have one other one after that on a different subject so we're going to start this evening with Haiti Sadler City Council members, over the last couple months, I have come before you with information voicing my concerns over the direction you are leading our city. On February 20th, during my oral communications of reminding City Council as our local government and the mayor about our Republican values, I was gaveled down by President of Council John Harrington. During my allowed four minutes, I was interrupted and accused of using salacious comments and saying things that I know, quote, and the citizens of Philly know are not true. The truth is I have given you facts that prove planning next who has prepared Finley's strategic plan helps committees with smart city initiatives. I have shown how all 5G and smart meter infrastructure we are installing is connected to the Internet of Things. I have shown that the companies being used, Metronet and Suez North America, for our water system and their software, 
gather information and data that connects us to the Internet of Things, an ecosystem that involves the Internet of Bodies, Internet of Behaviors, Internet of Thinking, and the Internet of Bio-Nano Things. Not only am I concerned about our health over all the re radiation being em emitted, I, all the infrastructure is surveillance-driven, just like China. I have shown how the U.S. Conference of Mayors follows Biden's Build Back Better agenda, which directly opposes our conservative Republican values. I have proven that the Ohio Mayors Alliance instructs mayors how to use grant dollars to fundamentally transform Ohio cities. You have proven to be following a socialist agenda with allowing an immigration task force by our mayor to help acclimate these illegal immigrants and their invasion not just of our country, but of our city. I have come to this council with facts, with data, and very important information. During Mayor Murin's teary response to my request for her resignation, she said people were saying ridiculous, crazy, and insulting things. She stated my emails were ludicrous and I had no accountability to speak truth, get facts, or share facts that were asked for. Well, I come to this council with factual information, I'm the one being attacked by Mayor Murin's words by calling me ridiculous, crazy, and insulting, all for requesting her rec resignation for not doing her job as she was elected to do, serve we the people, not her agenda. While we have very serious issues plaguing our city, you have chosen to add to, to create an ad hoc committee to improve public input process because you did not care to hear the concerns of your constituents. Dan DeArmond stated that the city has given the citizens the privilege to speak at public meetings. He went on to say, as soon as people feel disrespected, it gets very emotional and it's distracting to the purpose of the meeting. The people getting emotional in this debate was President John Harrington and Mayor Christina Murin with her salacious teary-eyed response to me claiming I was setting her on fire. You are the ones creating the drama. At the end of this ad hoc committee meeting, a concerned citizen approached the members of this committee about respect and our voices being heard. While she spoke, her representative, Beth Warnicke, was walking out. Josh Palmer, committee chair, kept his head down showing complete disregard for the people's voice. Another member, Dennis Hellman, showed up 30 minutes late to this freedom of speech battle. Wow. The fact is, this council has disrespected the people and, and their own constituents. We are the ones being disrespected with the tyrannical way we're being gaveled down and with disparaging toy, tones for speaking up against policies we don't agree with. You've even bullied members of your own council. Thank you. Next will be Danny DeLong. I'm Danny DeLong. I live at 130 Woodcliffe Drive in Finley. And I would like to thank the council for the privilege to allow me to address you tonight. Uh, I have several comments regarding the ad hoc meeting of March 12th. I was very disappointed about the outcome of the meeting. Citizens were not given the opportunity to speak. When asked if they would be allowed to speak at the next meeting, they were called, called to speak at this council meeting. That decision uh, had not been made whether they were going to be allowed to speak at the ad hoc. So that is why I'm speaking to you today. The meeting started with a training given by Assistant Law Director Rob Feiger regarding the Ohio Sunshine Law, specifically the Open Meetings Act. He proceeded to explain the law and then cite case studies where citizens had filed suits against city governments and lost. He mentioned a case by a citizen named Martin. I found a case by a Chris Martin that was filed in Cleveland against the city council. He brought the lawsuit because members of the public should be able to speak on issues that they care about without fear of being silenced because the presiding officer disapproves of their viewpoint. To quote a famous broadcaster by the name of Paul Harvey, and now the rest of the story. Chris Martin was awarded $500 against the Cleveland Council 
and the council was instructed not to make temporary rules. I also could not find where the assistant law director had completed any training on the sunshine laws from attendance reports from the Ohio website. That being said, I could not find any evidence of the three council members of this committee that had completed any training on the sunshine laws. What is the qualifications to make recommendations to the council to change council rules if they have not completed formal training? The meeting as a whole did not have a good feeling for the citizens by having two city police officers standing guard at the front of the meeting shoulder to shoulder was this to show intimidation to the citizens really this meeting was held at city hall which is the headquarters of the city police and if you viewed the youtube video their presence was not visible they were off camera the meeting after the lecture on open meeting act there was a 20 page proposal that sounded like this is what we are going to do with the rules even though prior to the meeting, citizens were instructed to contact their councilmen for suggestions, nothing was notated or discussed from the citizens. Is it any wonder that the citizens of Finley do not feel they're being heard? You ask for input that you do not address them, and then you do not allow citizens to talk at your committee meeting. This is very frustrating. Remember, you work for the citizens of Finley, and they are the ones that put you in office. The last footnote on page 132 of the Ohio Opening Meeting Act, point three, states right to hear but not to be heard. There is also a sentence in that that says, however, the, the Ohio Open Meeting Act does not provide or prohibit attendees the right to be heard at meetings. To me, this whole thing sounds like a contradiction. So thank you for allowing me to address you with my concerns. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Dong, did you have any comments about the proposal put forth in that meeting? As far as changing the order? The Mr. Darmot put together a proposal. Did you have any comments specifically about his proposal? I like the idea that you could bring it up at the different uh, very good. The different policies uh, as far as when they were discussing the different policies instead of right the first. I don't like the idea of maybe bringing it up at the end. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Frischie? I think that's a comment that I've heard quite a bit that people liked the one thing that Dan said. The one question I'll just say for me on the record since I don't know if I'm allowed to talk at those meetings either um, is if we have those discussions during the legislation, you won't know if that legislation discussion will happen at the first meeting, second meeting, or third meeting, depending if we suspend the rules or not. That's the difference between um, planning commission and, and city ordinances. Planning commission has their agenda. They know what they're discussing. We know what we might be discussing, so just food for thought. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your time. Our next speaker is Michael R. Bucky. I want to make sure I pronounce that right. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, one thing that he, Dan touched on about the meeting last week, um, when Dennis Hellman came in 30 minutes late, never apologized to anybody there. Is that what you guys are all about? I mean, it'd be nice to say sorry. And also, when he came in 30 minutes late, was he entered in with a, a vote or was it a legal meeting? Was he, oh, you know, when you take roll call and everything? So that's just a question. Okay. Um, you're, you guys are ready to make new rules. During election times, you meet with citizens and pretend you want to hear what we have to say. Then after you're elected, paraphrasing Grant Russell. If you want to speak, go tell it on the mountain. Oh, sorry. I mean in the town square. Really? Is that what this is all about? Maybe we should start by recalling Grant and taking back some of our power. Finley citizens should be the rule makers for the council. 
and you follow our rules. If we want to change the rules regarding speaking before our council, we should decide. What does the citizens of Finley think about that? Anybody looking at the meetings online and making notes, are the council members watching the people who are speaking? Are they looking down, making a shopping list? Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm nervous. City lawyer made a lengthy speech last week. Never once did he take the side of his employers and say, the city council has other options. That is, to let the citizens speak. As to what he said about court cases, just my opinion, but I don't believe him. As a public question, did he find any other cases in the law that takes the side of the citizens right to speak? And what about Andy Geronimo, professor from Case Western Reserve Law School? He's in charge of their First Amendment Rights Division. I think he has a case right now before the Supreme Court. And in my mind, I'm thinking, why do you guys want to make rules if there's something before the Supreme Court to make decisions on this? You already changed the rules I heard in January, and now you're looking to change them again. <clears throat> um, in my estimation, his was a home team opinion, and you guys are really representing us. Lastly, the old saying about you work for us. I don't believe you should be making your own rules. And I think the citizens maybe should have a right to speak about that. Um, and Holly, I'm glad you're going to remain with us. And that's all I have to say. Mr. Wilkes, sir. Mike, did you have any comments about the proposal that was put forward? <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I, regarding speaking. Yeah, what we're looking at possibly right. adopting. If you read what Andy Geronimo says, you don't, and he, again, he's the head of their First Amendment speech department. Andy Geronimo is from Case Western? Yeah. Okay, how does that have bearing on what we're talking about here? He has done that for Cleveland and for Cincinnati. Understood. My question to you was, did you have a comment about what we're proposing to do for public comment? Yes, I propose you leave it the way it is. Or okay. leave it up to the citizens, not yourself. Don't police yourself. Let the people police you. How would we do that exactly? Do we have a public vote? Yeah, Do sure, we why not? just vote for the What's people that are here tonight how to do that well we could do that if you want no i'm just trying to understand no, would, what you're it would, proposing it wouldn't be advantageous to you um when's the next election november okay so is it un unfeasible to put it on the ballot and ask the people what they want <laughs> yeah what's the question <clears throat> should we keep the rules regarding citizens addressing the council the same all right or change them to okay. the end. i just want to understand what your thoughts were thank yeah. you thank you we have a question. mr stashek um to this point for your benefit um there has been a properly filed initiative notification of my office that was filed uh, some time ago, maybe six weeks ago, maybe mm -hmm. a little longer, a little shorter, I don't remember exactly, I'm sorry, that goes exactly to this point where the citizens are in the process, from what I understand, of circulating a petition that will define certain rules of engaging this council from the public in, in regards, I know it addresses length of time, and I know it addresses the number of people, and I know neither of those things are allowed under the current rules, so the way that works, for your benefit, for the public's benefit that's watching, if enough citizens sign the petition that are valid registered voters, I don't know what that number is. I, when yeah. it's turned into me with those signatures, I'll call the Board of Elections, notify them I've received it. Uh, they will tell me the number, I will review it, and my office has has the role of determining whether those signatures are indeed appropriate. Yeah. If, they, if they are validated by myself, I send them to the Board of Elections, they in turn validate that the count is proper. If that happens, and it happens before the deadline, which is sometime, I believe, in late August, and again, don't quote me, I, right, I don't right. have that law in front of me, it will be on the ballot in November. So there is an initiative petition 
and it's my understanding it is actively being circulated that does go to this matter. So that addresses your question and yours as well, right. Mr. Wilkes. I guess one last thing is that old saying, who's watching the watchers or who's looking over the ruling class and making sure that they're doing what the citizens want? And thank you for your time. Okay, our next speaker on this subject is Patty Klein. Patty Klein, 733 Terra Oaks Drive, Finley. Uh, the red light is on. Okay. Um, I'm hoping Mr. Webster will ask me the question. At the, I'm hoping Mr. Webster will ask me the question at the end so I don't have to take my four minutes because I do have commentary on the meeting. But I have something else I want to present first. So I thought I would do this. What I, what I, I'm, I'm a former educator. I um, worked in special education and my job was adapting things. And so as I thought about the meeting that we had, uh, or that I observed um, at the ad hoc meeting, um, I thought about what are my ideas to improve this and adapt so that people that are frustrated, that feel they're not being heard, can better connect with their council people. I mean, we elect you guys as our representative, and that's what we expect. And it, people are frustrated because it doesn't feel like that anymore. So what I did was, and I don't know, can I hand these out or does somebody official have to hand these out? Okay. It's just a little packet. What I did was I redid the sign-in form that's out on the table. It's a small thing that could be changed. Um, that I think that with some adaptation, um, it connects the council person to the residents. I'll wait till you guys all have one. I'm sorry, that's going to go into my four minutes. Maybe I should keep talking. <laughs> okay. So my idea for a co communication form didn't just apply to oral communications here at council. Um, I thought this form could somehow be attached to also uh, email um, communication because what it does is it if you turn if you flip to the first page I did a dummy version of my form um, so the one big change there is to include your council your ward and your council person so that the information that you're speaking about at council would be connected to your representative that you voted for who's in your ward so, for example, my council person is Beth Warnicky, Ward 3. So they, the rest is general information. Down at the bottom, I put submitter, uh, submitters requested action, um, and this goes straight to what I'm talking about right now. And I wrote, consider using this form to improve accountability and transparency and uh, add, add these forms to the website just for transparency. At the very bottom, action taken by council representative. And then they would sign off that they looked at this. It's, I think it's so embarrassing when I think I see people stand up here and say, I emailed my council person and called them and nobody ever called me back. This would just give a little bit of accountability that your council person actually looked at your concern and then how they addressed it. If, if there's planes flying over the air, your house now that are really loud that weren't there before, you know, this says, gives Beth Warnicky the opportunity to say, hey, I contacted the airport di uh, director, and yeah, we had a change in the patterns, and yes, we understand what's going on. So anyways, there's, it's just a little, a little way that the council people um, can respond to a resident in a reasonable amount of time, and my suggestion for reasonable would be by the next council meeting. Um, and it just, it just improves. I mean, I think this is something that I would have like to present it at the ad hoc committee meeting if I was actually allowed to speak at the ad hoc committee meeting. I did submit something to it, but the public comments weren't brought up at the ad hoc committee, nor were they included in anything. I'm, that, I was pretty much done anyway, so. Thank you. Have a call. Yeah. Excuse me. Mr. DeArmond. Yeah, I appreciate your comments here. Actually, the part of our plan was we were going to redo this form. Um, as part of it. So we, we had three meetings scheduled um, 
and uh, we were going to look at this form. So I appreciate your input. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Wilson. Patty. <laughs> thank, yes. you for, thank, thank you for your very thoughtful input and work on this. This is great. What do you think about the weather? <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. It's That's windy it's and cold. cold. <laughs> All right. Here's your chance. All right. I was what do you think about the proposal? I was at the meeting. I think it could get confusing and long if we were to be able to comment in real time. And what uh, my you mean my, it at the time of the, of the discussion of, understood. Uh, Thank so, you. So um, my concern was, are we only able? Would we only be able to comment on legislation, or would we be able to comment on, say, the water department note minutes from? That, that were of the meeting that was held that week. So that is on the agenda, but it's not legislation. So I wondered how people could comment on those things too, sort of like I'm commenting on an ad hoc committee meeting. So. No, that's a good question. I would, anything on the agenda is what we're talking about. So to answer that question directly, it would be anything that's on the agenda, the water and sewer committee minutes, you could make a comment on that. Okay, and I would be very against, because of the rumors that I've heard of people wanting to walk out if they don't hear, if, if they hear speech up here that they don't like. Um, there's rumors going around that the council wants to change, uh, you know, the, the public comment to the end so they can leave. That would be really disappointing, really rude, and just childish, I think. So I hope that it well, doesn't move to the oh, end. Oh, Patty, I, I'll, I'll speak to that. That's okay. A rumor started by somebody okay. that has not ever been the discussion with anybody that I know of on this group but the only thing we talked about moving to the end was topics that were not on the agenda what do you think about that well would the it, if a speaker was speaking on things that say there's just no interest in on council I mean or, or if somebody was, say, asking for the mayor's resignation, I'm just going to use that. In the, I'm not trying to stir it. I just, I'm just saying, if somebody was up here saying that, would the meeting have to be adjourned because we didn't like, you know, that made people uncomfortable, or would that speaker get to finish their thought? No, they get. They, and that's a qu good question, but I think they'd get their four minutes like anybody else. Okay. As long as they weren't being disruptive or. Okay. So I that's think no, I it's good questions. Yep. Mayor, I, it, um, I I really like I didn't get to see your format, but and I'll get a copy from someone. It's quite all right. I, got an um, I think that that's pretty consistent with actually what we were discussing at the strategic planning committee meeting um, a couple months ago. We wanted to have a more standard process that anybody can submit feedback or something that they would like the city to review or discuss for consideration, and they could submit it via email or via the website. Um, and then there would be a process for us to follow back up with them to say, listen, we looked into this and it doesn't make sense because of X, Y, and Z, or yes, it's going to go to this committee on this date. That's how we handle, for example, traffic commission. Right. Items. I know, I know like street, yeah, street yeah. repairs anything, or you know, whatever. There's a way to submit mm. those. Yeah. Obviously this is council's meeting and council's rules. And I think it's just important to note here. I think what everybody is trying to achieve is that this is the business meeting of council just as the committee meetings are business meetings of council that are focused on specific topics. And what we don't want to have happen is that folks come in and are talking about things that are going on in March, right? That's not the business that they're all here to do and that the administration is here to comment on. And I so think that's what we're trying to achieve is just keeping it focused and keeping it cordial. Um, and I recognize there can be different interpretations of um, comments that are related I'll, I'll bring up Metronet. You know, that's been brought up multiple times, but that has nothing to do, that's not within the purview of city council or even the city. That is a public utility that's regulated by the state and federal government that we don't have any ability to stop, as I have shared with mm -hmm. numbers of citizens. So that's not something that's been on our agenda for discussion. Now we can discuss, you know, people would still be able to bring it up as a comment topic. Right, and the non-agenda items, you know, yeah. that we talked about, I mean, the important part to me is connecting that comment to your representative. Mm -hmm. And if somebody brings up, you know, aliens on Mars, the com the council per person could still say the city is not working on it, you know, and, and it goes back and or this is not something that we're working on. Yeah. So my it was that connection 
and the accountability and the transparency and those three things are what I thought about when I did this little form. Yeah, no, I think that's really helpful and I think you know all of us want improved communication. We just want it to be effective communication and not just. Um, so that was my worksheet for, no, the, for the week. Thanks, Patty. <laughs> Hang on a second, yeah. Mr. Bauman. Yeah, I mean, I guess <clears throat> I think I think you're you're in the, headed in the right direction. I I, I I don't know about you, Dan, but I I, I like some of your suggestions. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I think this has kind of all been blown out of proportion in that council has never been in the business of limiting free speech uh, but we are um, trying to create an environment where we can have adult um, public discourse and we can get our business accomplished at the same time so that's all I would say Mr. Dearman. I just want to, Patty, I would just add uh, the email address to this form. I think would be another, just there's another way to communicate. Um, I think it's on, I, I thought I put it on there no, but with phone, good, option, phone optional. Start. It's a good start, though. Oh, I did leave it off this yeah. copy. I'm sorry. It might be on the. Okay. Thank but you. But anyways. Oh. oh, and this was the, la oh, I'm sorry. I know it might, can I, can I just explain this? I'll ask them. Ms. Frischen. I was just going to say to Patty, I, I think this was a great start. Um, for the committee, um, I think what we need to define is what effective communication is. Um, and at the end of the day, city council business is public's business. So for us to define things, we're going to get into the weeds. And this kind of helps um, allow people to speak and then um, revert it over to a council person to have further discussion. And I think that's a great right. way to go about it. And this is just something I thought you guys could put at the table out there so that people who don't know who their council person is, and it would have to be better, but <laughs> a lot of people don't know who, who, what ward they're in or who their council is. Or a map person on the wall. Is. Yeah, maybe yeah. we could do a big one. <laughs> yeah, that was my thought was a, on the wall, but I'll, I'll get out of here. So you, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, our uh, next speaker on a different subject is Deb Stacy. Deb, name, address, go ahead. Deb Stacy, Allen Township, 2505 Township Road, 229 Van Buren, Ohio. Okay. Good evening, Mayor, Council. My name is Deb Stacy. Allen Township has been my home for 67 years. My husband, son, daughter-in-law, and myself have owned and operated a multi-generational farm in Allen Township. On March 1st, the Courier printed an article regarding economic development in the Finley-Hancock County area and announced the name of this project as Black Swamp Combinator. It will encompass more than 500 acres. Residents living in this immediate area have observed soil borings done by One Energy, and there is an awareness that landowners have options to buy plus neighbor agreements with One Energy. So based on this information, it includes Township Roads 215, 228, 230 and County Road 216. This location is not located near the connector road. It is in the very heart of Allen Township. This is a residential and agricultural community. 64 homes are located in the immediate area of this project and many more, many more are in close proximity. An industrial infrastructure of this magnitude, including mega wind turbines, solar panels, the largest electric charging station in the United States, and much more, will be the energy hub of the Midwest. It needs to be located on an industrial site that already houses compatible entities. This project, along with our township residents would be better served if a site was chosen that was closer to the interstate 
and next to existing warehouses. Allen Township does contain land on the south side of the connector road, close to the city limits of Finley, that would fit much better with this type of development. Responsible and logical planning needs to be done in accordance with existing structures. There needs to be a concerted effort to protect our community from inappropriate land use. There needs to be transparency. Who is responsible for providing information as to the exact location of this massive endeavor? Who will address our concerns for health, welfare, and safety, given the project is located in the current proposed area? Will there be an impact study from an independent source? Will there be a public forum so we can ask questions and make our concerns know, known? The time is now. Yes. Ms. Frischie. The These roads, are they in the city or in the county currently? Here. Well, I'd like to provide a point of clarification before answering any of those questions. The road, well, I'll answer the roads are in the township. There's two different topics that she is kind of merging. So the Black Swamp Combinator is an office complex that would be put on the campus of One Energy um, as a partnership for an innovation hub with the state of Ohio. It would be office space where there would then be prototyping in different shops in that. So that would be a less intense use than what she is referencing. The campus, the wind turbines, the solar panels, that is nothing that is separate of the Black Swap Combinator. That is the project related to Whirlpool's project with One Energy for their net zero target uh, with energy infrastructure. Um, so that is a privately owned and operated project um, that has no private property and a private project. So the Black Swamp's in the city? The Black Swamp Combinator would be on the campus of One Energy and it would just be office spaces okay. on their campus. So what is the purpose of the commercial wind turbines and the solar panels that are not going to feed into the electric charging station? Those would be providing, my understanding is that those are providing private energy to Whirlpool as part of their project. Okay. You would have to contact, Whirlpool has put out press releases about that um, on the properties that they or One Energy already own, so that is a private property matter that the city has no involvement. Are you in. aware of where these wind turbines are going to be located? We have not been able to receive any information. I actually went to the county commissioner's meeting last Thursday and actually spoke with Mr. Basin prior to the meeting and asked him if he could provide some information. I actually read a statement that was somewhat similar to this but a little different, mm -hmm. and he said, he had no information. He really didn't know anything about it. Um, I don't. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Mr. Wilpser? No, go ahead, Mayor. I was just going to say, I, I don't believe I've seen the specific locations of that. Again, that would, if it's construction occurring on private property, um, there's, and there's no zoning uh, per Allen Township, so they would not need to file anything with the city or county unless they are trying to extend our infrastructure, which I'm not aware of. Um, they would have to you know, separate them out to not conflict with each other as they have with their existing turbines. But I don't believe that I have seen any specific plans and they would not need to file anything with the city or county. So for clarification, you are stating that these wind turbines and the solar panels are to feed for Whirlpool? That is my understanding. And they will have nothing to do with the actual uh, Bitcoin mining and the electric grid for the charging station for the, the truck? So we, not all of them necessarily would just be for Whirlpool. Obviously, One Energy could continue to put up additional turbines on their property to supply <coughs> as long as it's behind the meter. It's not going on to the grid, which is how they operate. Um, so they could supply it to that. I don't know the specifics, but the 500 acres you're referencing um, I don't know, again, if that is an accurate amount. I haven't been in that involved with the project, but the, the um, wind turbines and solar panels that are being expanded are for Whirlpool. 
Okay, I'm getting, I'm pulling the information from the website from the Black Swamp Combinator because it states on there it's gonna be 500 plus acres. We have not been able to get any information from Mr. Kent of One Energy. It is a strange situation because he has litigation against our township trustees mm -hmm. and other people as well. And there's, in a sense, uh, a gag order placed on individuals that um, it makes it difficult to try to get information. Mm -hmm. So in going to the county commissioners, uh, I was seeking, trying to at least get information and a more concise <coughs> information as to the actual area. But the point that I'm trying to make is this is a residential and agricultural area that this, if it's an industrial complex of this magnitude, we really would like some information. There's gonna be impact on our welfare and safety and our property values. And uh, we feel like it's impacting us. We have no voice. Yeah. So I would love to meet with you. I would love to meet with your economic development, Mr. Schaefer. Um, I'd be happy to sit down and discuss because yeah. we're not getting information and we really need information. Yeah. I'm sorry, but Mayor, let's let Can some... Can I make one more comment? Okay, real quick, because I have some council members that'd like to ask you some questions. Yeah, I was just going to say, the reason that it references the 500 acres as part of the Black Swamp Combinator is because it's part of that entire project campus. If you go to the county auditor's website and look at the different parcels, those are currently pr typically... There's a large portion of them that are already owned by One Energy, so that will give you some general idea of what properties are being referenced. Okay, Mr. Wolves. Ms. Stacy, are you involved in the current Allen Township zoning proposal process that's going ongoing? I'm a resident and a voter in Allen Township. So if our zoning commission and if the zoning, the Allen Township trustees uh, had a special election on December 20th of 2023. And at that meeting, um, people from the township transplanted themselves from the hearing that the county commissioners had because Mr. Kent wanted to change the name of Township Road 215 to Electric Avenue. I understand, but are you involved in the zoning? They're trying to get not a proposal on the, the November ballot such that you could get your township zoned. As it is in the works. This. It so is are in, you involved is, in that? It is. I personally am not, okay. but That's I do vote, and I am supportive Good. of it. Were okay. you in support of the last two times the zoning came forward? You better believe it, and I was on the zoning commission. Very good. I hope it gets through this time. Ms. Frischie. Mayor, um, I was at the commissioner meeting last week when they had a couple of folks come in um, with concerns, and I think there's a mixture from the announcement of the black swamps. So I think you helped clarify a little bit for her on that. But um, I did request from the commissioners, which they seemed receptive of, is possibly having the city, the county economic development, having a public forum that maybe, so maybe if you could just reach out and talk with the commissioners and maybe help coordinate that to help get them on the same page because they're, they have a lot going on in their wheelhouse. And I think another thing that would be potentially helpful is with our zoning, since it abuts up to Allen Township, that maybe we can put some caveats in there to be considerate of backing up into residential or just something to partner better with Allen Township on some of these pieces. But my main comment to you is, can you go ahead, reach out to the commissioners, help coordinate with them to have a meeting, and I think that would be the biggest help to get what she needs from today. I Mayor. will. I will be happy to talk to the commissioners, but I think that it's really important that it's distinctly two different subjects because I'm not getting involved with the Allen Township zoning. That's not my place, and I don't care to have another. <laughs> okay. <laughs> questions. And, and we side. have questions. We just would like some information. Well, but we can meet and I, I'd like to better understand your question so that we can delineate the two subjects okay thank you okay thank you okay that concludes our oral communications for this evening written communications an email from Deb Tyson regarding Sunny Farms landfill also known as wind waste innovations letter to be filed and let's see, um, a letter from Phil Rooney of Rooney and Ranzel LTD regarding downtown Finley Improvement District, also known as DFID. 
Mr. Stashek. I want to point out um, a couple pages into the letter. I think it's four pages in on the back side. There's a spreadsheet. The DFID is a normal process. It's been reviewed several times now um, for five-year periods with a gap of one year, I think, in one of the recent renewals. In this document, uh, it references an MOU with the City of Finley where we are to receive $40,000 per year. Um, as you know, we do a lot of work, and you can see a lot of work being done by our employees in the downtown area. I can tell you we had uh, quite a bit of discussion last year, and we've worked with the administration to make sure that we are accounting for time, energy, effort, and materials that go into that work. But I want council to be aware it far exceeds forty thousand dollars. We were, I think we were in excess of a hundred thousand dollars last year. So this renewal period is your opportunity as a council to consider whether or not a forty thousand dollar payback from the downtown merchants uh, who are members uh, or, well not just the merchants, excuse me, the downtown um, district here is appropriate or if you might want to consider more. I'm not advocating for other si either side. I'm telling you this is your opportunity to maybe make that more equitable if you feel that's necessary. And that's my comment. Letter to be filed. Not for written. Okay. Uh, report to municipal officers and departments. Finley Police Department activities report for February 2024. <coughs> report to be filed. Finley Municipal Court Activities Report for February 2024. Report to be filed. City Income Tax, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, City Income Tax Monthly Collections Report for February 2024. Mr. Stashek. <coughs> I'm hoping this is the last time I have to talk tonight. <laughs> so um, just as a side note, I, I've been telling you that we expected a normalization of the withholding <coughs> income uh, this year. I spoke with Mr. Wolfson <coughs> about this, had a nice conversation with Mary, our, our income tax administrator. And we did see a significant um, windfall in the withholding income here. Uh, without that windfall, we would still be looking at uh, uh, a reduction in the amount as compared to last year. So I want to note this is the year we should see a normalization of those numbers. There was again a windfall, which is a blessing. However, um, we need to be careful as we're considering uh, operational and budget items that we're aware that those numbers are now normalized. Report to be filed. Officer Shareholders Disclosure Form from the Howe Department of Commerce Division of Liquor Control for Baker's Cafe LLC located at 408 South Main Street, Suite B in Finley, Ohio for a D1 liquor permit. A check of the records show no criminal record for those who applied. Mr. Bauman. I make a motion that no objection be filed. Second, Mr. DeArmond. All those in favor that no objection be filed, say aye. aye. Any opposed, nay. So ordered. City Planning Commission staff report of March 14th, 2024, the agenda of March 14th, 2024, and the minutes of February 8th, 2024. Report and agenda to be filed. Finley Fire Department activities report for February 2024. Report to be filed. Treasurer's reconciliation report of February 29th, 2024. Report to be filed. Summary financial reports um, as of February 29th, 2024. Reports to be filed. Letter from Service Safety Director Martin regarding insurance payment for repairs of a police department vehicle from an accident. Letter to be filed. Letter from City Engineer Kalb regarding 2024 annual street resurfacing curb repairs contract B for asphalt, project number 3284100. Mr. Russell. Jeremy, uh, two questions. Is newcomer pouring cement? They are here. Um, whoa. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, and they will be pouring concrete. Hopefully the weather holds out this week. Excuse me, concrete. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I know that we, we brought, uh, we uh, did the uh, curbs and gutters in one reading because there was a benefit to getting them 
up and started, but they have to have a head start on the on the paving. So that <coughs> is there's not the necessity for this uh, tonight, is there? No, I, I don't even think asphalt plants are open yet. Yeah. So I, I I should be fine with three readings on Great. this. Great, thank if you. If it changes, I'll let you know. Letter to be filed. Letter from Mayor Mern regarding District 13 Integrating Committee appointment. It does not require council confirmation. Letter to be filed. Letter from Mayor Mern regarding, or excuse me, letter from President of City Council Harrington regarding appointments, appointment to 911 Program Review Committee. This appointment requires council confirmation. Ms. Warnicke. I would make a motion that we accept this confirmation. Second, Mr. Greeno. All those in favor of the confirmation say aye. aye. Any opposed, nay. You are confirmed, Dan. Sorry. <laughs> Hancock Regional Planning Commission minutes for February 21st, 2024. Minutes to be filed. A letter from Human Resources Director Essex regarding employee satis, um, satis, 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 satisfaction. Even, there you go. Satisfaction <laughs> survey results. I'm sorry. Letter to be filed. Board of Zoning Appeals minutes for February 8th, 2024. Minutes to be filed. Letter from City Engineer Kalb regarding swale benching prop properties, project number 319-41500. That is an add-on letter. Letter to be filed. An add-on letter for Hancock Regional Planning Commission Director from Hancock Regional Planning Commission Director Cordonier regarding moratorium amendment. Letter, oh, Ms. Frischie. Why would we not do something permanent at this point? Oh, there? there you are. I didn't even know you were here, Matt. Okay. I saw you. Why, why Matt? Letter? Matt, introduce yourself. And, uh, and let, me, <clears throat> let me clarify. We have a letter regarding a moratorium that's expiring for games of skill. And we want to extend it from, we originally had it for six months. We want to extend for 12 months. My question is, why not make it permanent? Matt, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Matt Cardonier with Regional Planning. Um, I did submit a letter requesting an extension of the moratorium. Uh, we had done six months and then we had done a year and time flies and here we are again. Uh, the moratorium expires in the middle of April. Um, to your point, it slipped through the cracks in our update of uh, the major update last year. Um, I would like to bring it forward, but the, the necessary time to bring forward a amendment to the zoning code we would be past the April the middle of April <coughs> so I'd like to put this in place and then I can bring something forward in uh, end of April beginning of May of this year yes okay thank you Matt letter before oh Mr. Diarmit so do we have other moratoriums it seems like we have a couple others that I recall. No. so uh, we had a small box store yeah and, okay. there, and there was um, where, where are we at with that one? I, so that I don't know that that moratorium was ever put in place. I'd have to. It's been almost two years. Um, <coughs> there was. <coughs> I don't believe council. Did we have something about cannabis too? Some. So. Okay. That's. All right. I'll let the mayor speak on that. <laughs> but but there, there's there's only one moratorium, and that's for the games of skill. Okay. small gambling type parlors right. um, there was I did bring forward discussion about small box retail stores and there was not, council was in favor of the moratorium for s the games of skill but not the small box retail okay. all right Ms. Dan had a good comment that made me think um, West Park had been asking for a moratorium if they wanted if they wanted to get that figured out, they had to figure it out by April or they're out for another year? No, no. I oh, mean, April doesn't mean anything to me then. No, I'm just, you know, anyone can bring forward any recommendation to changes of zoning or moratoriums or. I thought you were saying we were on a certain cycle to no, do so it. Our, just on the cycle when current, this is expired. Our current, our current moratorium on games of skill parlors mm -hmm. ends in the middle of April. <coughs> Thanks, but Matt. There, there's no, there's no time limit 
to amending the zoning code. <clears throat> any citizen could request any change to the zoning code. Matt, on a personal note, I want to congratulate your son on an excellent season oh. for Finley High School basketball. And it was a real enjoyment to watch him play this year. And I'm sure you were at every single game. Yes, I was. It was yeah. a lot right. of fun. Thank you. Okay, moving on to committee reports. An ad hoc committee met on March 13, 2024 to review the 2024-2025 Council Rules of Procedure. We recommend continued discussions on Rules of Procedure changes at the next ad hoc committee meeting on March 26, 2024 at 4 p.m. Ms. Warnicky. Make a motion to accept the committee report. Second, Mr. Wobser. Uh, discussion. I just want to remind everybody there was an add-on, which was the printout that uh, Councilor Feigner uh, sent us. Oh. Hearing none, all those in favor of the committee report say aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. Committee report is adopted. The Planning and Zoning Committee to whom was referred a request, request from Rooney and Ranzel LTD, Phil Rooney, agent for the petitioner, for the zoning of 77.808 acres of land located on Township Road 230 and County Road 212, known as the Sheets Hat, also Hat Trick, also Buchanan Annexation, being part of the east one half of the southwest quarter of Section 32, Allen Township, Ohio, owned by Stella B Buchanan, <coughs> Said parcel is currently in the process of being annexed into the City of Finley, Ohio limits to be zoned I-1 light industrial. We recommend that the property located on Township Road 230 and County Road 212, known as the Sheets, Hattrick, Buchanan annexation be zoned as I-1 light industrial. Mr. Baldwin. Make a motion we accept the committee report. Second, Mr. Hellman. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the committee report say aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. The committee report is adopted. The Planning and Zoning Committee to whom was referred a request from Women's Resource Center of Hancock County to rezone 1600 Laquinio Street from R3 Small Lot Residential to 01 Offices and Institutions. We recommend to table this agenda item. So this is Mr. Russell. Move for adoption of the committee report. <coughs> Second, Mr. DeArmond. Mr. Russell. Uh, uh, Chairman Bauman, could you uh, fill us in why we tabled this? Yeah, so it was. It kind of came out of a as, as a discussion that was had at City Planning Commission. Um, <clears throat> they had uh, made the request, um, but I in the end, I think it was determined that they didn't need the request; that they could just put signage on the property, and 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 they they did not need to go through kind of the rigmarole of the the zoning request change. Thank you. All those in favor of the committee report say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The committee report is adopted. Planning and Zoning Committee to whom was referred a request from Young Men's Christian Association, also known as YMCA, to vacate the north-south alley between lots 568 and 569 in the Carlin's S&P edition and the east-west alley between lots 565 to 568 and 587 to 590 in the Carlin's S&P edition. We recommend vacation of the above-referenced alleys. Mr. DeArmond. Move to approve. Second, Mr. Bauman. Discussion, Ms. Frischi. Is this the alley that runs behind the YMCA that dumps out onto Sandusky? No. No, north south. It's actually It's actually. Go ahead. It's east of the building, so uh, by the parking lots, where the building, where the houses have been demoed, the alley that ran between those houses. Okay. So this is a full vacation, or there's there's other properties that are going to have a dead end. No, no. it's vacation. Full vacation. Yes. Okay. Mr. Bauman. I, I was going to say I think if memory serves me correctly, there was also already a portion of this alley previously vacated, so it, it just made sense to to kind of continue that trend. Right. <coughs> All those in favor of the committee report say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. The committee report is adopted. Legislation. First reading for resolution 12, 2024. A resolution approving the renewal petition services plan and budget of the downtown Finley Improvement District and declaring an emergency. Mr. Russell. Move for adoption of resolution 012-2024. Second, Mr. Bauman. Discussion? Ms. Frischi. If we wanted to have discussion on changing amounts by for any reason, 
to send that to appropriations. Do we have, does this need three readings? No, nope, just one. Just one. one. So if we, I guess I, I look at the cost factor for the one employee. If we're at a hundred thousand, we're not covering our cost. And then, um, recently I was in a citizen meeting with, um, some of the administration and county departments regarding the Blanchard River and some cleaning and the, and the county or the city is realizing that 95% of the cost to keep the Blanchard River area clean um, inside the city is going to be our responsibility and I kind of made a comment that maybe that person might double over to that but if they're being utilized to that point and at that dollar amount, I feel like we should be discussing that since we're going back into a, was it a three year or five year? Uh, five year. Um, so first of all, negotiating the MOU should be a separate discussion. I don't think that we should hold up their ability to appropriately do the tax rolls. Um, we can discuss that. It really was to cover just the expense of some of the added things that we're doing, for example, the flowers. Um, previously, they were purchasing that. We had a bunch of issues um, when the person that was maintaining them retired. Um, to be honest, I would rather just let them keep the money and reinvest it into the district than keep dealing with the headache of the chargebacks that we're having to manage when we already have people helping maintain. Um, I would add that as we've been talking about the downtown recreation area, um, we do have it built in and part of our plan to expand um, Elliot's role to help do maintenance in that downtown area and are discussing how we can help clean up the river um, in a more effective manner throughout the city of Finley and working with the um, Blanchard River Watershed Partnership, Hancock Soil and Water and some of these other things. Um, so I think that that trying to merge all of those topics wouldn't be appropriate to try to hold this up. I think. Um, this is an effective organization to re -inar invest in our downtown, and the MOU is a completely separate document. Mr. Stashek. Whoop. Thank you. Um, I guess I do have to talk again. Appreciate <laughs> the comments of the mayor. However, the, the timing of this is pertinent, and if you are going to consider that, it would be my recommendation that you table this and have that discussion because um, – Part of my role in this, once this is approved, is to take the properties, take the square footage of the properties, and take the amount they are assessing on themselves and divide it by the square footage of the properties, excluding schools, churches, and government. So if there is a need for them because of tight budgets or because of the amount of money we're spending on them and you wanting to collect more or whatever, for them to adjust that number. You need to do it before the district is passed and before it's put into place and before I, I validate an assessment over to the county auditor's office. So that's very, very important. I do agree the MOU is uh, uh, discussion is separate in the sense of the agreement itself. However, if the dollar amounts are going to change and it's going to impact what I need to assess, then that needs to be done as part of this document. Mayor. I understand that and I would be against trying to make them increase their uh, amount. These are property owners that for the benefit of our downtown are already assessing themselves an additional tax and I think us going back to them delaying the process after they have already had all of the property owners sign the petitions to be able to file the paperwork I think just would not benefit the community as the organization was meant to do. Ms. Frischie. So I used to manage a property that was part of the DFID um, and what its original use was for was to help out and them still um, do, the, um, do the work themselves. It has changed over dramatically that we are pretty much um, taking over everything for them and then they're getting charged that assessment back. I. I feel that we, I'm going to make a motion to table this, send it to appropriations because it is fiscally responsible for us to have that discussion. Um, and I'm sure that the DFID folks would understand that because we should be reviewing it before we approve it. So I make that motion. Motion dies to the lack of a second. Any other discussion, Mr. Russell? 
Yes, for uh, I am the uh, council rep to uh, the downtown Finley Improvement District and have uh, had that role for numerous years. Uh, there has been uh, a transition with the uh, DFID to using uh, the city and specific Elliott uh, to do a lot of the, the labor, the, now the purchasing of the flowers. Uh, for uh, really, a, a re, uh, it was a re, uh, reaction to the reality of the of the uh, labor market. Uh, the, the DFID could not find people to do specifically the water, uh, f flower watering, and the uh, and the and the beautification, the, the cleaning up, uh, at a at a reasonable cost, and also ha and, and also that were were reliable. And uh, a couple of years ago, they had some. Uh, we had some difficulty with uh, the flowers because of watering issues, and 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 working with uh, the mayor and and her team, the 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 city provided the best the better best labor source for this because because they're 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 available and they're reliable, and uh, and I mean and Elliot just and, and does this almost like it's 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 his his personal. Um, yard the, the lobby puts into it but it was a reliability issue it's more it, it was a more expensive issue so this is eating up two-thirds of the uh, DFID budget uh, the DFID also because it is a collection of property uh, owners it's not the businesses it is the it is the, the uh, building owners that are, are assessing this assessing themselves as tax they're very um, focused on that on that Do, that bottom line and a sixty thousand dollar a year uh, fee. It's buying them less as inflation takes more out of the, more of a bigger bite. But they really hold hold to that. And I have never heard a discussion uh, where they wanted to revisit that total amount. And um, to do so at the last minute would really be uh, really pressing pressing on the DFID. Uh, they want to get this passed so that they can continue the stream of the sixty thousand dollars that they self-assess uh, on on themselves uh, and keep that stream coming on un uninterrupted. Ms. Frischi. So these property owners originally prior to the DFID they shoveled their own snow they beautified their front windows and and took care of their sidewalks and the DFID bringing it together was to unify it better so everybody was saving a little money and getting things done then they found that they really weren't getting that benefit and there was some struggle to recertify one year um, to get enough property owners in there here nor there Elliot does a great job but there's a line that if we're not going to raise the rate then maybe we um, we discuss what we are actually going to cover and not cover because we have to be fiscally responsible with our taxpayer dollars um, and leave some of the responsibility on the property owner um, we leave the responsibility with all property owners outside the downtown um, and we and we do our snow removal but we don't do their sidewalks um, I understand when we did the downtown improvements with the bump outs and the mid block crosses and we added in the flowers and all that that's great maybe that's something that we take on uh, with the flags but maybe the rest of it we have to figure out what works and I don't know why it's a battle to say that it, it would be a hardship on them it could be a hardship on us and so that's why I mean it's been five years we we should evaluate and make sure things still line up I don't nobody's looking to price gouge anybody mr. Bauman I, I make a motion to table or excuse me excuse me I make a motion to <laughs> call the question All the question. <laughs> Sorry. It's always question. What are you talking about? <laughs> Mr. Russell. D downtowns are are uh, are unique. Are unique. Uh, One moment, please. The the motion died due to lack of a second. Mr. Russell. D downtown uh, downtown areas are obviously very unique t to. Uh, uh, a community and they're they're vitally important in, in ways that are 
um, not always easy to put a finger on. And um, as you read about any successful downtown, uh, be it Greenville, South Carolina, uh, be it Finley, Ohio, uh, anywhere, it's always a combination. Of, it's a public and private, it's a public-private partnership <coughs> that, that helps make them successful. And I know that from my own personal experience, uh, when friends visit and they see uh, Finley and they see Finley's downtown, they are, uh, uh, they're always impressed. And I believe uh, last week in the newspaper, uh, Editor Spears' uh, father, who writes, a, a, I think, a weekly column in The Courier, mentioned the reaction of his friends coming to visit Finley for the first time and how they see uh, the city of Finley and, and, the, and uh, what, d what downtown has to offer and 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 it was an, it was and how they are they have a very impressed view of, of what our downtown is and, and the DFID and the property owners that have gone together and this is the this is started with John LaRich and Mike Mal and, and uh, Dr. Uh, Wires and and countless others and I, the the Wasboros were uh, influential in this they work their tails off to make sure that this thing shines to the benefit of all of Finley and, and really Hancock County and uh, they set the budget and then the the MOU is a, is a separate issue I, I concur with the mayor but I think we need to keep working uh, with the DFID with our downtown property owners with our downtown businesses to keep making this thing shine and I uh, keep getting better each year because it is a jewel for this area All those in favor of the resolution say aye if your name is called. Those opposed, nay. Mr. Ballman? Aye. Mr. DeArmond? Aye. Ms. Frischi? Nay. Mr. Greeno? Aye. Mr. Hellman? Aye. Mr. Niemeyer? Nay. Mr. Russell? Aye. Ms. Ms. Warnicke? Aye. And Mr. Wopser? Aye. Two nay. The resolution is adopted. Ordinances. Third reading for Ordinance 2024-27, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and or service safety director of the city of Finley, Ohio to take bids and enter into contracts for insurance coverage for airport liability, automobile boiler machinery, contractor's equipment, crime insurance, police professional liability, public officials errors and omissions liability, real and personal property, and declaring an emergency. And I wanted to make a note that I had it stated incorrectly on the agenda it's not to extend the co current contracts but to go out to bid <laughs> Ms. Frischi I make a motion for approval of 2024-027 second Mr. Hellman discussion hearing none all those in favor of the ordinance say after your name is called those opposed nay Mr. DeArmond aye Ms. Frischi aye Mr. Greeno aye Mr. Hellman aye Mr. Niemeyer? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. Ms. Warnicke? Aye. Mr. Wolpser? Aye. Mr. Ballman? Aye. Ordinance is adopted. Second reading for Ordinance 2024-30, an ordinance vacating a certain portion of a certain street here and after referred to as the Strong Avenue Vacation in the city of Finley, Ohio. Second reading for Ordinance 2024-31, an ordinance vacating a certain portion of a certain alley, here and after referred to as the Sixth Street Vacation in the City of Finley, Ohio. Second reading for Ordinance 2024-33, an ordinance authorizing the service safety director and or city engineer of the city of Finley, Ohio to advertise for bids where required and enter into a contract or contracts for construction of various projects in accordance with the 2024 department equipment list, appropriating and transferring funds for said capital expenditures and declaring an emergency. First reading for ordinance 2024-35, an ordinance appropriating funds and declaring an emergency. First reading for Ordinance 2024-36, an ordinance appropriating funds and declaring an emergency. Mr. Wilson. Since it's just a small transfer for a um, uh, insurance settlement, I'd make a motion that council rules be suspended and this uh, legislation ordinance, excuse me, be given at second and third reading. Second, Ms. Warnicke. 
hearing. We're on, we're on 035, right? Oh, I'm sorry. 36. No, it was 36. Okay. Did I miss one? All those in favor of suspension of the rules say aye if your name is called. Those opposed, nay. Ms. Frischi? Aye. Mr. Greeno? Aye. Mr. Hellman? Aye. Mr. Niemeyer? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. Ms. Warnicke? Aye. Mr. Wopser? Aye. Mr. Ballman? Aye. Mr. Diarment? Aye. Rules of Council have been suspended, and the clerk will give this ordinance at second and third reading. Ordinance 2024-36, Ordinance 2024-36. Mr. Wilbser. Make a motion to approve. Second, Mr. Greeno. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the ordinance say aye if your name is called those opposed nay. Mr. Greeno. Aye. Mr. Hellman. Aye. Mr. Niemeyer. Aye. Mr. Russell. Aye. Ms. Ms. Warnicke. Aye. Mr. Wilbser. Aye. Mr. Ballman. Aye. Mr. Diarment. Aye. And Ms. Frischi. Aye. The ordinance is adopted. First reading for ordinance 2024-37, an ordinance appropriating and transferring funds and declaring an emergency. Yeah, add on ordinance 2024-38, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and or service safety director of the city of Finley, Ohio, to enter into an agreement with the Hancock County Commissioners to purchase required land within the benching area in order to finish phase one of the benching project, appropriating and transferring funds thereto and declaring an emergency. First reading for ordinance 2024-39, this is also an add-on ordinance. An ordinance amending ordinance number 2023-35 that amended ordinance number 2022-119 of the codified ordinances of the City of Finley, Ohio to extend the current moratorium on the establishment of any skill-based amusement businesses in order for the City of Finley, Ohio to consider incorporating the pro proposed additions into the current zoning code as outlined before, below before enacting them as part of the codified ordinances of the City of Finley, Ohio and declaring an emergency. Old business, new business, it's fresh. I don't know if it was old or new. Question on the municipal parking lot. Any more, there's never any parking in the lot on Crawford. I know we used to lease some spaces to businesses. I also know we have construction of the court building and parking is restricted, but I do see a lot of city employees parking in that lot are we utilizing the marathon performing arts lot are we not like how can we improve this parking because nobody can park there mr martin so down to as you stated downtown parking has been um challenging recently um but we have a plan that we've implemented since those 180 plus parking spots were taken away um it, we use primarily the parker lot which is west of the sheriff's office in that property we own as well as then overflow should go to the marathon center for performing arts so we're able to use the north lots there there are spots on northwest street which is further west or past the parker building that we're utilizing and in front of the sheriff's office but the intent is to maintain the municipal parking lot for people that want to need to conduct business here so I know the cadence of coming and going it it's hard to keep track of who's in those spots but chase does a great job of it but it does appear to be full a lot of the times i don't know who those individuals are but for the most part my understanding is they're conducting business down here are we still leasing spaces too or not we don't we lease spaces and the argyle law and other places we don't lease any spots out of the municipal law mr greeno yeah, I got a little something here. Two weeks ago, we had a proclamation for Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month, and I'd like to take that one step further and bring to your attention that tomorrow, March the 21st, is World Down Syndrome Day. 321, that represents three of the 21st chromosomes, which causes Down Syndrome. I would like to read an anonymous illustration that I found that kind of makes this a little easier for people to understand. Who knows why Down syndrome occurs? Why does the extra 21st chromosome stick to the cell when the fertilized egg is first in cell division? It can be compared to what happens in nature to a field of clover. Usually, we see three clovers on each clover, three leaves on each clover. Once in a while, however, we find a clover that has an extra leaf, making it a four-leaf clover. <clears throat> we don't know why Mother Nature decided to add this extra leaf. She just did. 
This is obvious explanation. All of the clover plant, plants grew in the same soil, were exposed to the same sun and rain, etc. Mother Nature just decided to add an extra leaf on one of the clovers in this clover patch. This doesn't make it better or not as good as the other clovers. It just makes it different. Some people <coughs> believe uh, this brings them good luck when they find a four-leaf clover. It is much the same way with the extra chromosome. We don't know why, why Mother Nature <coughs> let the cell divide unevenly, but she did. She decided to add another chromosome to the baby cells. It doesn't make the baby better or not as good as other babies. It just makes it different. And if you find one of these babies, you are truly lucky, for they are very special babies who grow into very special people. And one of those special people is my little Ollie. And just want him to know that Poppy loves him very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Greeno. Mayor? Mine is not as uh, lovely, so thank you. Um, I would like to request, though, if we could revisit Ordinance 2024-035, the legal settlement. <laughs> If a council member would motion to, Mr. Hellman, I would I would motion that we go ahead and proceed with that. I haven't we haven't heard it yet. Yeah, reconsider it. Ms. Frischi? Aye. Mr. Greeno? Aye. Mr. Hellman? This is to revisit Ordinance 2024-35. Aye. <laughs> uh, Mr. Niemeyer? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. Ms. Warnicke? Aye. Mr. Wobser? Aye. Mr. Ballman? Aye. And Mr. DeArmond? Aye. It's back on the table. Well, we have to make a motion. All we've done is reconsidering it. Now somebody has to make a motion to approve, or it has to be suspended. I'm sorry, it needs to be suspended before we have any discussion. Mr. Wilbs. I'll make a motion to approve. Sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah. suspend rules. Thank you. Yeah. Second, Mr. Bauman. All those. In favor of suspending the rules, say after your name is called those opposed nay. Mr. Greeno? Aye. Mr. Hellman? Aye. Mr. Niemeyer? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. Ms. Warnicke? Aye. Mr. Wobser? Aye. Mr. Ballman? Aye. Mr. DeArmond? Aye. Ms. Frischi? Aye. Rules of Council have been suspended and the clerk will give this ordinance its second and third reading. Ordinance 2024-35, ordinance 2024-35. Mr. Wilson. Motion to approve. Second, Mr. DeArmond. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor of, of the ordinance say aye if your name is called. Oh, does he want a discussion? For discussion. Did, did you have something you wanted to say? I was just going to, for the record, so folks are aware, this is an, just a transfer out of our self insurance fund and was a topic discussed in executive session given it's a legal matter. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of the ordinance say aye if your name is called. Those opposed, nay. Mr. Hellman? Aye. Mr. Niemeyer? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. Ms. Warnicke? Aye. Mr. Wobser? Aye. Mr. Ballman? Aye. Mr. DeArmond? Aye. Ms. Frischi? Aye. And Mr. Greeno? Aye. The ordinance is adopted. Other new business? Ms. I'm sorry, Ms. Mayor. I will be quick. Um, I, just two items. First of all, um, my condolences to those whose lives were lost or to the families of those who were lost in the storms last week. You know, I know we were all um, grateful that there wasn't more damage in our community and that the, the storm passed the city of Finley. I want to thank um, our team who responded and the spotters that were out around our county keeping a close eye on it and keeping everybody informed um, to make sure that we were uh, keeping our community safe and then those that have also helped a clean up across the region. Um, 
on the marijuana topic, I just wanted to let you know that I continue to prompt the state to get an update there, as was previously stated, when the legislation was passed through the constitutional amendment, um, the state legislature is still working through the regulations and process that will be in place. Most notably, there it's their understanding that they will be putting in administrative rules that will restrict the licensing that's available for dispensaries. Once we have more clarification on that, then we'll come to you all to take appropriate action and have discussion. But right now, we really don't know what, if any, restrictions we'll be able to place, how we would be able to manage that. So continue to stay on top of that. Um, and as soon as I hear anything, I'll, I'll let you all know as well. That is all. Thank you. Well, their new business. Mr. Hellman. Yeah, if I might just for a minute like to revisit some statements that were made in public comment over the past, I don't know, weeks or months. And it was a piece that was on the news this past week, and it has to do with the water meters. And we've heard so much about them that it, 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 it aggravates me, I guess, to the point that we begin to ill-inform the public. And the statement that was on the news goes like this. It says, the meters operate on a closed network, making them more secure than your average smart home or internet connection device. <coughs> the meter's radio frequency is weaker than that of a cell phone, and the batteries are comparable to the ones used in laptops or other devices. So some of the comments that have been made that are more scare tactics, I think, than anything else, I'd, I'd just like for people to understand that there's, an, there's another uh, opinion, I guess, of the, uh, the safety of the water meters, and I trust our, uh, our, our engineering department and the people that are in charge of these kinds of things to uh, see to it that we're not being, not being radiated to the point that we're, you know, losing our minds or what have you. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Bauman. I guess just to piggyback on uh, what uh, Councilman Hellman said, um, it is also my understanding, and, and maybe Rob, you can you can clarify here, that they they turn on once, you know, when the billing cycle has come due, they turn on, <coughs> they transmit their data, and then they turn back off. So they wake up once a month, once a month, then. I don't know. My water bills every two months. Or, yeah, they cycle in the process. So. But they're not continuously on. But they don't. There's more to it than just on and off. I guess my point was, thank you. But I guess my point was, it's not like they're on all day every day. Correct. No. And so therefore, perhaps some of the concerns are, are, overstated. Other new business. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Bauman, second, Mr. Diarmut. So all those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. We are adjourned.